Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestle Horror. All right. Greetings, viewers and listeners. Meet Hook Jim here. Wrestle Horror Podcast. Um, as always, my co-host, Donnie Hoover. Donnie, how's it going? Oh, doing good, bud. How's everybody doing? Oh, I'm hanging in there. I'm sure these guys are Fantastic. too. Yeah. And, of course, we've got John Orlando with us. John. How's it going, everybody? And on this episode of Wrestle Horror, we've got the guiding light, Matt Taylor. Matt, how are you? Hello. I am doing great, fellas. How are we all doing? I'm excited. Yeah, we've been trying to get you on here for a little while because Donnie's been trying to work some things out. So how, how are you handling things during this downtime for professional you know i'm doing pretty okay it's different um honestly man this is like the first time in 20 years that i've actually had like downtime from wrestling because like i started really young so this has kind of been the first break that i've ever had so it's actually been kind of nice okay which is shocking yeah (laughs) (laughs) when's the last time you wrestled Oh, goodness, man. You're going to have to make me think. Uh, it was probably the week before everything shut down. So okay. The week before that the was either, maybe? Yeah, it was week. It was week. Yeah, that was then. I don't remember what, sh- what show it was, but yeah, so the, 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 the second week of March. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's been crazy. Well, you know, one thing I've noticed that with this downtime, um, with all the wrestlers and everything, this it does give you guys actually – some time to heal yeah um yeah it does but i i think honestly it's having like the opposite effect because we're so used to falling down you know so our bodies are just confused right now like i don't understand (laughs) (laughs) what's going on yeah yeah i can attest to that like back in my day when i wrestled like i could like fall or do stuff and and it wouldn't even phase me and now it's like I walk into the kitchen and bump into the wall, and I'm like, ow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's different, man. man that's, that's for sure. Like, yeah, not falling down and then being, you know, you know, mm-hmm. going like that, then it's just it's a completely different world, man, that I was not prepared for. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I think it's going to be safe to say when they do open things back up, those first few shows for pretty much everybody is going to be pretty painful. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt, you've never had any major injuries, have you? Because as long as I've known you, you've always been pretty healthy. Uh, yeah, you know? yeah. yeah, I've been lucky, man. I think the worst thing I did, like, years ago at a – I you ate the backstage. I did a dive and I, I fractured my foot. But beyond that, and I, you know, it didn't really stop me from from wrestling or anything. So even though it was, I should have. But yeah, no, that's pretty much been the worst thing that's happened. So yeah, this has been, you know, the first time I've, sl- I've slowed down and recovered. So it's been yeah. weird. <laughs> Yeah, well, you mentioned the IWA. Let's uh, back up a little bit and start from uh, Matt Taylor's beginnings because, oh, like I said, I, I've known Matt for many, many years now. People may not realize that, but he's he's been around a very long time, and I think I've known him probably from, from the get-go. <laughs> so You have, yeah. yeah. yeah tell, man, tell us a little bit about your, your start and everything that people want to know. Yeah, I uh... – I started at the IWA. They had a youth class, um, the YWA, um, on West Fifth Avenue in Grandview, Ohio. Um, I walked in there, and I was 13. And they had a tryout, and I did it. And as a kid who's 13 years old, and they're told you can wrestle, <laughs> hell yeah, I'm going to wrestle. So you on cloud nine. <laughs> yeah, I was on cloud nine, man. That, at that <laughs> point, because at that point, you know, I was, you know, into sports and everything, Youth sports, you know, football, soccer, baseball. Then once that started, that was all, you know, gone. Flew <laughs> out the window. So, yeah, I, I started there, and then I never really stopped. Have no how, long, since. how long was the initial training with the bull? Till when? <laughs> <laughs> well, for, the, for, the, <laughs> for your first few, <laughs> first few times at the IWA, was there, I mean, was it kind of just more or less – Here's a couple of things, and then let you guys can go and wrestle. Or uh, yeah, we kind of got thrown into the fire, man. Okay. Uh, I I walked in there, and I think I trained for four weeks, and then the 
I started at the beginning of January in the year 2000. And yeah, that sounds about right. 2000 or 2001. And we always did shows the last Sunday of the month. And that's when I started. So it was like four weeks and they just kind of shoved us out there. Yeah, yeah, to be honest, I thought the YWA stuff was great. I had a blast. I, I'd go and watch the shows and just sit in the audience, and, and I'd just have a blast with it. It was good to see those kids out there having some fun like that. That was the best part, man, because, like, you know, our our parents would show up and everything and watch us, but they didn't really know how to react, you know, to be <laughs> wrestling fans, uh, so they would be more or less scared. But the adult wrestlers for the IWA would be there and play it up and have mm. fun with us and pop and stuff like that. So it, it was fun, but um, I had no business actually doing that. I've said that from the very beginning. <laughs> so you're saying you should have never listened to any of us back then. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, um, and anyone who says that now, like I'll have people come up to me at, at like the, the gaming tables and stuff now and say, Hey, my, my son is, he's, 15 and must start training and go no <laughs> just <laughs> wait till he's 18 don't don't bring him anywhere at you know 15 16 don't just wait yep. you are not old enough yet you are not mentally prepared for the crap that you're gonna get handled yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, have you ever done any, any other trainings besides here in columbus like if you went out of state and went to any of the big schools or anything no, I, I've, I, I haven't gone to the schools, but I've done like lots of, uh, of uh, seminars and, and, and stuff like that. I've done like uh, Steve Carino's, um, da, 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 Chris Hero's, uh, oh, Lord, trying to think of all the ones I've done. Uh, I've done that, and I've gone to the Ring of Honor tryouts and, and stuff like that, just, you know. Lots of seminars, and I can't. I'm, I'm blanking right now, but I've oh, yeah. keep trying to do them, and you know, everything, even now, because you know, you don't stop learning. Oh, yeah. yeah, right, right. Were your going back to a comment you made just a few minutes ago, Matt? Were your parents fine with you wrestling? Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, no my, my parents hated it, man. Uh, but they <laughs> knew that I loved it. So, and from yeah. our time I was a kid, you know, like four, I watched wrestling so they kind of knew once i found the end that there was no real deterring me so they just kind of embraced it after that i guess but they didn't okay. they didn't want me to do it at all no okay. gotcha. <laughs> yeah well, who were some of your uh, favorites growing up as a kid since you said you've been watching since you've been four who were oh some of your man favorites, yeah man? like some of like the things i can remember most when i was a kid i was uh, i would go to like blockbuster and things like that and i would rent the old coliseum videos and um WrestleMania 4 was big for me. So, like, Macho okay. Man was huge for me. Hulk Hogan, obviously, and um, Ultimate Warrior were, like, my big three when I was little. And then um, it kind of all snowballed from there, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you were a WWF fan growing up? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We won't hold that against you. <laughs> yeah, I, well, you know, I actually had that talk with with a with 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 my cousin like the last week because he's eight years older than me, so he loves you know NWA Flair and all that. But like, man, that was a decade before me, so I grew up with the big characters and Hogan and Hall, you know, mm -hmm. Hulk Hogan, Hulk Morgan, and everything. So that's pretty much how it happened with that. You know? mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. On that time, that's probably about all you had, really. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. So after the IWA, because um, because not only you were in the youth class, but then you started mm -hmm. wrestling for the IWA when you uh, turned 18. Yes. Um, so after IWA, um, where did you head to next? Because I believe, was it OCW or was there a couple spots in between? You know what, man? Jeff Cannon, um, he was a tough one to crack. Like He was one of the last – ones in in Ohio that I actually got to okay. to uh okay. to work for. Um, I left IWA, went to Mad Pro and the WWC down in Southern Ohio. Yeah, after okay. that, yeah. Uh, okay. But no, man, took forever for Jeff to actually love me. So, <laughs> 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 so did you notice right away, like when you left? uh iwa you went to say for example mad pro mm -hmm. uh did you notice right off the bat the difference in the crowd 
Uh, yeah, man. Um, every place is different. Every town is different. But what was weird about Mad Pro is it was the same town as the IWA, but it wasn't the same fans, which I always found fascinating. Like, you would think there would be some, you know, spillover, but it was completely different. So, yeah, uh, Mad Pro was a different style because uh, Josh, he tried to get more of the indie guys there, and it wasn't more local guys. So, yeah, it was uh, it was definitely a, a different atmosphere. So, yeah. That was that was Chilla Coffee, correct? In that yes. bar, did they, yeah, Mad Pro, gotcha. Yeah, they did that. I don't remember the bar name, but it was like an old bank. It, 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 yes. was, it was cool. Yeah, yeah, for cool. sure. Yeah. Cool. So, who was uh, who would you say was some of your favorite opponents or toughest opponents, whatever you want to call? Oh man, uh, my favorite opponent of all time would be Aaron Williams. Um, he was there with me from the time I turned 19. So until now, so I, we wrestled all over the state together and Aaron is one of those guys who I don't think ever really gets the credit for how good he is because of how good of a guy he is, if that makes sense. Cause he's never going to be the one to tell you how, mm-hmm. how, mm-hmm. how, you know, great he is. Um, but man, I've wrestled so many good guys, so many great guys, so many guys who are on TV now and done great things so it's it's kind of hard but i honestly my favorite by far is aaron just because not only the wrestler but the man he is you know okay very cool yeah uh, so so who were some of the people that you've wrestled that are now on tv oh man uh half the nxt roster no. <laughs> uh john moxley i've, okay. I've wrestled uh nice nice um I wrestled Alistair Black, Johnny Gargano, um, Swerve, um, lots of them. And I've been in there with a lot of great guys who have gone on to do great things, man, which is awesome. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah I'd love to see it, yeah. Have you ever been in a ring with any, like, WWE legends where you kind of marked out a little bit? Marked out. I mean, I have so many, like, a lot of <laughs> – um, Marked out, yeah, but then I, honestly, man, like the majority of the time when I got in there with them, I was really young, so it was more or less not marking out, but more or less not wanting to mess Screw it up. up too bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, that's the way I was with Snooker. I was like, oh, yeah. man, if I, if I screw um, something up, he's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wrestled a, a, a debater, and I thought I was going to die, so – Mm-hmm. I'd have loved to wrestle Bader. I'd have been no, awesome. you wouldn't have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Bader beat the crap out of me, man. Uh, well, rumor has it he works. He works stiff. You know, man, that is one hundred percent true. And <laughs> Bader is such a nice guy that he apologized to me afterwards. I was eighteen. Literally, I was eighteen. I just turned eighteen, and I was the only. He did a one-on-three match with us, and I was the only one that could wrestle. And. Uh, <laughs> was that in Lancaster? It wasn't Lancaster. I was it at was, that show. Were you? You got to see me die. Um, <laughs> uh, you know what? Screw it. We'll go back. I'll tell the whole story. So um, <laughs> I had my first match at Bull, and um, it was also in Lancaster. And then I was doing the training. Then I was training uh, the wide WA kids and I got hurt so I had my first match hurt my knee so I was off for like a month and I came back and then as I was coming back Bull says I got something for you I said what's that yes we're going back to Lancaster and you're gonna wrestle Vader what (laughs) (laughs) he said you're gonna wrestle Vader and I was like all right cool I I guess you know that's fine I I, I can do that I was scared shitless Uh, (laughs) so we get there that day and uh, Bulls like Vader thinks it'd be better if it was like him going against the gang of guys. Like, All right, that's cool. We can we we can do that. Um, so the gang of guys ended up being me, but under a mask, and <laughs> Bones Dudley, and a guy who walked up to Vader when we got there, shook his hand, said, "Hi, my name is Sugar Daddy." I'm green. This is my first match. Oh, jeez. Vader didn't say a damn word. Vader <laughs> smiled. Just nodded in. Did this. So. If only that kid knew. Right. Yeah. So, Vader, 
looks at me and goes, we'll start the match. And I said, all right. <laughs> so we go out there. He doesn't say anything. Um, well, no, I, hold on. We'll back up even further when I thought I was for sure going to die. So I had this crappy mask, right? This crappy future mask. I put it on. Vader looks at me and goes, but that's a cool mask. And I, and I look at him and his mask and I go, I'll trade you. Did not pop for it at all. Vader just stared at me and went, okay, now I'm really going to die. I tried to make him laugh. It didn't work. So, <laughs> so we go out there and we're having this match and uh, the bell rings and like I said, we didn't talk about anything. So we just go out there and like Vader starts, all right, for people who don't know me, I am all of five foot eight if I'm lucky. Vader is not. <laughs> Okay, Vader's about <laughs> six foot four, 400, 500 pounds at, 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 at his point in his life and everything. So we go to lock up, but we're not locking up. Vader just kind of slowly backs me into a corner and then takes his hand and throws a punch at me as fast as he can right at my nose, but pauses right before he hits me. And then he screams to the crowd, oh, that would have hurt. He's right. <laughs> that would have hurt. Because <laughs> then, as I go to sell that, he starts laying in these Vader punches, which, if you've never taken a Vader punch, he punches you with his wrist right here. Mm -hmm. As hard as he can, and just blast you, blast you, blast you, blast you. So he's hitting me, he's hitting me, he's hitting me. Shoots me off, gives me a clothesline. And like I said, I'm all five foot eight. Vader is not five foot eight. And does not does not care to adjust his clothesline. His clothesline hits me dead in the face, <laughs> knocks out half my filling, and all I hear is this loud ringing in my ear. This boom. And what brings me to is I hear I didn't say tag out yet. Apparently, I had crawled to go tag out of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> and I, the first thing I remember saying after that, very loudly, and you can, and I have this on tape, is me going, I wasn't tagging out, sir. <laughs> 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 and he grabs me, picks me up, and goes, Are you okay? And I go, Yeah, I'm fine. He goes, All right, cool. Choke slam. <laughs> Choke slams me and goes, Now you can tag out. Tags in Sugar Daddy. <laughs> Sugar Daddy comes in. Bader takes his open hand palm, slaps him in the air. Oh. To this day, Sugar Daddy lost 90% of his hearing in his left ear. Wow. Blood was coming out of his ear. Mm. Bader picks him up, throws him out of the ring. And in this building, it was a barn, a dirt floor barn. All I see is this puff of dirt come up from the <laughs> other side of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> and then points to me and goes, you come back in here. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> At this point, I think Vader likes me now. And we actually like wrestle for a second. We wrestle, we do a couple things. And then he says, all right, I'm done now. And there were some other guys, local guys there, uh, Cyrus Poe, um, Tommy Chill, and Jobber. And one of them graciously from the last row yelled, kill the other guy. So that prompted Vader to grab me and toss me and finally tag in Bones Dudley and he killed Bones Dudley and that was the end of the match. So <laughs> that was my fun Vader story and we get to the back and Vader looks at me and says, I'm sorry that I worked so stiff out there. Uh, it was a lower crowd and it needed to look real. And I smiled. I said, thank you, sir. But I've watched you work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think crowd had anything to do with it. <laughs> okay. No. I, was, I feel <laughs> like right now I have to apologize to you, Matt. I have Why? to apologize to you because I was heckling you guys in that match. And <laughs> uh, little did I not know it was you. The you dick. Because <laughs> <laughs> there was like, what, 20 people there? There was right. nobody there. 20 people, and, yeah. And my buddy Joey and I went down, and we were sitting, like, way up in the bleachers. And uh, we started this chant at the beginning of the match of, fuck them up, Vader, fuck them up. That was right? you? That was me. <laughs> you me and Joey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because remember, Vader gets mad, and he he looks over at, in our general direction, and he yells, there are kids here! 
Yes. Yeah. I, <laughs> and then, I have it all on tape. Yeah. yeah and then we started <laughs> chanting, "We're sorry, Vader." Yes. Yes. We're sorry, Vader. Oh my God, John, you're blowing my mind right now. Yes. God, you never told me this before. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> hey, Matt, you'll yeah. just have to remember that next time you do a dive outside toward the, the <laughs> announcer's table. I'm going right from the table. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well. <laughs> Matt's Matt's gonna just tell his opponent. Just, just you don't even have to be in the way. Just move out of the way. I'm going right into the <laughs> land on the table. Just, you yeah. know the amount of times I've tried to do that. <laughs> I've literally tried to jump over the the uh, table, but my opponent will never do it. Like I can clear the table, guys. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> you just need to like jump to the outside and then just slide under the table and bite him on the ankle or something. <laughs> <laughs> You caused my death that day, you jerk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. <laughs> no, John, it's, it's you, fine. you're in trouble the next new one. I am. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you not know it was him until just now? I had no idea. I had no I idea it was Matt. Yeah, but, yeah. I didn't know. It was a good mask, but I didn't know until this point, until he straight up said that chant, because I remember that, because literally that chant happened after the punch. Right. He's, he does a slow <laughs> punch, goes, all oh, that would have hurt. And then the fuck him up, Vader, fuck him up chance start. And I go like this. And that's when Vader fucked me up after he said there's kids here. <laughs> well, I say John said he didn't know it was you either at that time. Yeah, until, until just now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did. We talked about this on your podcast, John. You didn't bring it up then. I did. I, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I just assumed that it was some other un. Unfortunately, it was like a Never in my wildest dreams would I go, man, it's somebody that I'm going to like and care about. And, you know, no, no. Yeah. Was, uh, fucking jobbers were gotten the, their asses handed to them by Vader. Well, I was there. Well, so. I hope you're happy, John. I hope you're happy for what you did to me. Oh, uh, the dirt we uncover on the rest of our <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Dig, dig that hole a little deeper, John. <laughs> man, man. I thought we were friends. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is an awesome story. I mean, yeah. uh, I hey, can I could only imagine. I mean, I, you know, all the stories I've heard about Vader and, and how stiff he works, and you've been there. Um, right, so I'm glad it was you and not me. <laughs> you should be because, <laughs> like, every story is 100 percent true. Like, <laughs> especially me being 18. Right. Didn't stand a chance, man. <laughs> so can, can I ask real quick about um, probably what OCW fans remember probably the first time actually seeing you compete. Um, was You're going to do this, are you? Well, I was, I, no, no. I wanted to ask about <laughs> Chad Cruz and your tag oh, team okay. with, with Cruz. Not where and, I thought um, you were going. Because there's but, another bone to pick with you with this, but go on. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait, no, 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 wait, wait, I got oh, set up on that one. I got set up on that one. Okay. I got set up on that one. This is what happens when you believe Jeremy Madrox. You're like, you should never oh, believe okay. Jeremy. You should never believe Madrox. <laughs> well, hey, what's the story? I want to know. <laughs> so, like I said earlier, it took me years. I wrestled Jeff Cannon. We had a good match in WWC. It took me another year after that to finally get booked for Jeff Cannon, and it took a blizzard. A blizzard of people not showing up for Jeff finally to book me. We get there, and I get put in this match. And Jeremy Maddox, this is my first mistake, I said, I didn't bring my music. Jeremy said, I got you. And I've known Jeremy since I was 13. I've since I was 13, so I should have thought twice about this. But as – um. I, my music starts to play. It's the, I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. And John Orlando announces me as Move It Matt Taylor. So my debut for, <laughs> for OCW was as Move It Matt Taylor. <laughs> you jerk. I am sorry that I believe Jeremy Matt Who would be called that, John? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guarantee you nobody ever had the name Move It. <laughs> I swear to God, I didn't know. It was, I mean, uh, as a side totally. story, that's the second time I've been blamed for bad music. Uh, PWC, Todd Richards didn't bring music one time, and I asked him, I go, do you have music? He's like, no. And they had some other guy running music. 
He goes, tell him just to play something hip hop. I'm like, okay, cool. So I told the guy that, and they ended up playing New Kids on the Block. <laughs> hey, man. And I had heat with, with Richards for like a, two weeks on that. I'm like, dude, I swear to God, I didn't do it. It's not like, it's not my, it's not a rib. Like I told the guy, play something hip hop. That's what he pulled up. That's his fault, man. He should have embraced the shit out of that. Just went out there like dancing and everything. I worked it. I moved it when I came. You out. did <laughs> <laughs> after the initial shock, you know. <laughs> well, anywho, um, can we talk a little bit about your tag team with uh, Chad Cruz? Because I know uh, the Noble Bloods. You guys had a, a long run in OCW and down in Southwestern Ohio and everything. So, how did the team come together? Um. Uh, it goes back to the IWA. Um, Chad started, and um, he was <laughs> uh, like I said, I was training the, the the kids class, and Chad was training a bull. And um, I love bull, God rest his soul. But um, bull is very limited with the things that he can show you. So Chad started showing up to the kids class, and uh, would train, you know, and everything. And then he would, you know, go on the. The shows, but then Chad was in the National Guard. He went to Afghanistan, I believe, for a year, and then came back. When he came back, um, I was at that point wrestling for HWA, and I was wearing a dress, and I wasn't really doing much. And I said, hey, Chad, I need a tag team partner. He said, all right. And he started coming there, and then we kind of got put – together and the rest was kind of okay. history at that point yeah okay yeah why were so, you wearing uh, a dress <laughs> <laughs> man at that point uh i started out there and i was doing everything i mean i got to wrestle a lot of great guys that's when i wrestled uh john Hoxley for the first time and everything but you know I was new there. I was young. I was, what was I, 20? So I was just a young guy, and um, I didn't really have a gimmick. And they came up with an idea of me to wrestle hardcore Heather Owens. And uh, I was being a, a um, misogynist jerk, and it all culminated with if I lose to her, I wear a dress. And oh, okay. I lost. So I had to wear a dress for 30 days. And then after that, um, they put us with King Vu, and the Noble Bloods were born. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I forgot about kind that, of, dude. Yeah, man. Then we all kind of branched off from there. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Cool. But yeah. But Chad's dead now. Not actually. He just got married and had kids. <laughs> <and everything. laughs> He's like, let me clarify. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well done. Well done, man. <laughs> I really hope he watches us now. <laughs> so, um, you know, Matt, unfortunately, I mean, you came down and wrestled for FGW recently. I did. Uh, and unfortunately, that was the one show that I missed because I've been to every show since August. And that hey, weekend. Man, I've been there twice. I've been there twice. Okay. The first time was before me. Okay, <laughs> but I I, mi I missed the second show mm -hmm. because I was in North Carolina and I wanted to see you wrestle there, because uh, but this whole guiding light thing and that's what they were they were building up to bringing you in again before the COVID hit, right? Because I remember seeing the you know the promo is coming up with the guiding light Matt Taylor it's like. Yeah, that's what they played that night. Me and Terry come down there after they canceled the Arnold. We went yeah. down. That, yeah, we yeah. went down that Friday night, and they had his his on or montage video or whatever. Yeah, and, and it's like I saw that. I said, "What happened to Dark Star?" <laughs> well, <laughs> um, all good things must come to an end. Sure. So uh, it was, man. I was then. I think I became the Dark Star when I was twenty three. So okay, almost. Ten years of that, man. It was time to it was time to change. And sure. if you're not reinventing yourself, um, you're getting lost in the shuffle. Right. And I just kind of got bored with it. So it was okay. some time for something new. Sure. And to be reborn. Yeah, the, the tattoos don't really work. Oh, you haven't seen me wrestle yet, have you? 
<laughs> You'll never see the tattoos. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen you wrestle as the guiding light. Right. So yes. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, speaking so, of, I'm sorry. Does somebody? No, else? no. You go ahead, Jim. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, speaking of uh, the different gimmicks and wrestling, and I forgot where I was going with this, um, but I'm going to see if I can remember real quick. Just keep going. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Just keep talking and figure it out. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll hash it out here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank completely. I got distracted. So, John, whatever you had to say, I'll remember it after you. Way to go, John. It's all your Did fault. Again, I'm the scapegoat on this episode, aren't I? <laughs> Shit. Why do you think we have you on here? No. <laughs> oh, the truth comes out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't. I mean, I got nothing. I mean, you know, I got nothing. I'm in a glass house. I'm not going to throw stones. Well, speaking um, of speaking of Matt's tattoos, I do have to say that his arm tattoo is probably one of my favorites I've ever seen. If I'm being honest, see, let me see. Thank Does you. Show up. Yes, yes, sir. That one right there. There we go. There yeah. it is. <laughs> Look Thank at that. You. Thank yeah, you, Don. It's pretty cool. Because that's what I want. That's what I yeah. wanted to. That's what I wanted to segue into. Because Don, Donnie has told me that you're a huge horror fan. I am. Yes, absolutely. Obviously, by your tattoos. Um, favorite uh, horror movie? Oh, goodness, man. Um, that's hard. I love Wes Craven so much. So anything that he does, I'm okay. a huge fan of. Okay. A Nightmare on Elm Street will always have such a awesome spot in my heart but um scream is my favorite okay. i think i watched that so many times because it was um it kind of um you had the birth of the slashers in right. the 80s and everything and then it kind of started to die off but then wes yep. was like nope i got this here's yep. scream you get this you know mm. complete horror movie murder mystery slasher film and it was awesome and perfect and kept you guessing. So, yeah. So, Scream is my favorite of all time. Yeah. Oh, okay, fair it, enough. Um, it's at the top of my list as well. And yeah. I agree with you completely. I've told a couple people that, that you know, I was a big 80s horror guy yeah. and uh, loved all of 80s horror. And then it just kind of died off. And then the stuff that did come out was crap. and <laughs> didn't make sense. And then Scream just basically just like – shot it gave it a shot of adrenaline and just brought horror slasher back to where it is yeah it was kind of like its last breath though because now we have a mm. bunch of um japanese and paranormal horror which it's it's i don't know i don't understand why we can't figure out a new slasher to come back with at this right point, but, yeah. yeah yeah there's got to um, be a new one that can be made exactly yeah right. The blueprints there. <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> yeah. uh, unfortunately, uh, Hollywood likes to uh, – the creativity in Hollywood is, is dropped radically because it's always a reboot or a rehash or right. – mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, some of these B-horror movies that come out that might fly under the radar actually are worth checking out. And I, I don't know if you, if you have it. I know Donnie's got it. The Shudder Horrors. Mm -hmm. Um, you can find some pretty interesting stuff on there that uh, you've probably never heard of. Right. And you're not going to, you can't expect, you know, Universal Studios quality um, effects, but, you know, for what it is, I, I enjoy some of the B movies, you know, it's. Um, That's what, you know, horror is, because, you know, at the start, they were never not these mainstream Right. you know movies or anything so they, they should be like that they should be gritty and dark and dirty and that's what makes them great man because i, I think the original like friday that the 13th was made for basically nothing and then it, it, if you put the gross to now right like you know like what would it made like off of that it's 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 crazy to think about but um that's what it should be it should feel dark and gritty and that's what horror is Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I've become a big fan of independent films, and, and like on especially on Shutter and and uh, Tubi, I found a couple good ones too. I mean, you can find. I some... hate Tubi. My brother, <laughs> my brother, for like a month said, "Hey man, get Tubi, get Tubi, get Tubi." And it makes literally no sense, and I'm going to explain it. But um, it's why I hate <laughs> I hate Tubi and Hulu for the same exact reason, and but I don't hate cable commercials 
<laughs> I'm watching a movie and a commercial hits right in the middle. Like this is stupid. Like to be mm-hmm. yeah, because of that. But no, um, yeah, but the selection on, on Tubi though is is great though. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was gonna say I watched Train to Busan on <laughs> Tubi and I was annoyed by the commercials because you're like, like into the action and then yeah. it's like yeah shit. It's like, oh <laughs> man, what the hell? Man? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, one of my favorite, uh, it wasn't necessarily, it was an independent film when it first came out, but gained a little more mainstream is Jeepers Creepers. Mm-hmm. I love Jeepers Creepers. Um, great film. Uh, and it actually, the first one was filmed, I was living in Florida at the time when it was filmed. Um, so shortly after it came out, I took a drive to where they shot all the footage. And I've seen that church where the creeper was throwing bodies down the tube. Uh, before it burned down uh and so you know that's awesome mm. and, and i've met i've actually met jonathan breck who played the creeper and i met him at a horror convention and he creeped me out because you know he was just normal jonathan breck we were talking i interviewed him for my other podcast the big scary show and he when i went to pose for a picture he sniffed me like the creeper would I mean, he's standing there just next to me, and I hear this sniffing going. I was like, the hair on the back of my neck stood up when he did that. That's awesome, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, he's keeping Kate Abe alive, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Abe's alive with him. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Every good artist should. When I, uh, the Jason tattoo on my arm is from Friday the 13th, part seven, which is the first one with Kane Hodder. Yes. yes. And uh, I met Kane Hodder at a, at a convention, and I showed him, and he was not impressed. Um, <laughs> I said, I got your tattoo on me, and he said, Is it of me or is it of him? And I went, Like Vader, I went, Oh no, I made him mad. <laughs> I <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> so, um, uh, so the picture, um, he's strangling me. Yep. And he's literally strangling me. Yep. You can see in the picture, he's literally, my face is red because he's literally choking me. I got choked out by Jason. So that's pretty cool. Me too. I've I've been choked out by Jason as well. Me too. (laughs) Which I didn't really, I wasn't ready for it though. He kind of just like snatched me up and I was just like, oh God damn. My my, my face was red and everything. (laughs) Thankfully, my brother met him a year before that and told me all about it. So I had an, an inkling of what was going to happen. But well, yeah, I mean, well, I was a dumbass that asked for it. I was like, "Hey, can I get a choke pick?" And I was expecting, I was expecting, I was going to get in position and get ready. And he was just like, "Yeah, sure," and just grabbed me. Yeah, wow. I was like, "Oh God!" <laughs> <laughs> oh so, my Jesus! In that vein, do you like? Do you enjoy going to haunted attractions, haunted houses? Oh yes, that's my that's my favorite, man. I love it. I love being scared. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you so you've been to ones around the Columbus area. Mm-hmm. Did you ever go to uh, Mine and Grove City? I am not. You know that. Son I feel bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what, man? It's just it's been hard. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, when uh, we were kids, open, you were always yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, no, I've gone to the Haunted Hoochie a bunch. Um, okay. Yep. Yeah, I've been. What's to the, the What's the one on one sixty one? Thirteenth floor. I've gone to that one. It was uh, Scaratorium. Yeah, it was yes. Scaratorium. Yeah, I've gone to that one. That was that. that that's been fun. Um, when I was a kid, I, I don't think they do it anymore. I did the Haunted Trail. I don't remember where it was, but it was somewhere around the area. Um, it was out east somewhere, wasn't it? Yeah, it was out east somewhere. But one of my favorites in Ohio is um, out in in Wilmington. Um, they have a haunted uh, bus ride, which is awesome Wilmington Haunted Hayride yes it's yeah. it's it's a bus and then like one of the climaxes the bu- uh, the bus is chased by a semi truck yep. and then actually hits the bus which is fucking crazy but it's wow. it's cool to see yeah okay yeah. I don't think I've ever been on that I'd like to try well, that one out you need to go yeah it's a lot of fun <laughs> yeah yeah it's not too far from uh, Brimstone Donnie oh really yeah um, and uh, as far as Scaratorium goes, I've actually I've worked at Scaratorium before, and I've actually trained actors at Scaratorium before. Oh. Yeah, he's uh, also trained at uh, my haunt in yeah. your hometown that you've never been to. 
But, you know, uh, I, I promise you, <laughs> you keep bringing this up, I will come. <laughs> oh, it, it's not open now. We don't, yeah. It's only open for two seasons. <laughs> no, I got gotcha. you. Well, then. How's it feel, Matt, Michael. to be the scapegoat? How's it feel, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it was bound to happen. <laughs> I, um, I actually... Um, I'm a professional, I'm actually retired, but I'm a f professional haunted act, haunted house actor and trainer. Um, That's awesome. But I retired this past year. I'm, I'm not a beyond doing some training and stuff, but um, yeah, I, I, I love scaring people, you know, so people like you that like to get scared are my favorite kind because you appreciate what we're doing. Of course, absolutely. Um, yeah, man, that's, that's, that's part of the fun. It's like, take it back to, you know, to uh to wrestling you know it's the same thing you want that pop you want that scare so it's the same thing man right See, he's yeah. not just a pretty face on the microphone after all is he <laughs> <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah. maybe i'll maybe i'll wear one of my masks when i announce sometime absolutely <laughs> the unknown ring announcer <laughs> so oh, the no, unknown no. scare actor <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so we've talked about horror. We've talked about some of your history and some of your wrestling. Um, what advice would you give to new wrestlers getting into this business? Oh, man. Uh, don't. No, that, that, that's sad. That's, that's not wrong. That's, you know, um, you got to love it, man. Like, if this is something you want to do. Like, whether it's you want something that you want to make a living at or if it's just something you want to do, on the weekends, it's commitment, 100%, man. Like, it is diet, it is exercise, it is full-blown commitment to what you love to do. And that's all I, you know, ask of anyone that I'm ever in there with is that this is, for those, you know, 10 minutes, 10 to 20, this is what you want. So just full-blown, give me everything you have, commitment, because that's what it takes. I mean, and people can tell if your heart, you know, is, is there or not. And, um, that's wrestling, man. It's, it's, it's about your heart. So that's what, that would be the best advice that I could give, man. Cause this is not, um, an instant success. It is something that you have to work hard at and it's, mm -hmm. it's slow. <laughs> so patience, I think is the best advice that I could give. Just, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in this day and age, a lot of young uh, people that are trying to get into the business, they think it's immediate success. They think they're going to be a star. Um, not all of them, but some of them don't really understand the business and think it's just instant. But, you know, you and other, you know, you, these guys you see on TV, they've been working for years. You've been working for years. It's not an overnight thing. I mean, yeah, that's that's what it is, man. I mean, it's just it, it's years of hard work because um, the unfortunate thing about professional wrestling, unless you're exceptional at it, um, you don't really grasp it until you've done it for a long time. Right. So the moment you get it figured out, you're like, man, if only I was, you know, five to ten years younger. I wish I was, you know. So um, uh, don't be afraid to ask questions man learn as much as you can that's what wrestling should be you know um just ask shut up listen and that's what it should be just listen man learn <laughs> that that's sage advice and you know everybody we've had on this show since we started mm -hmm. it's always shut up and listen yeah man that's that's what it should be uh, i mean it's amazing how many of them don't right <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah i mean all of us were guilty of being young and dumb and not, you know, doing that. But uh, that is the best thing you will ever do for yourself, man. Is mm -hmm. You just watch, shut up, listen, and work hard, man, and great things will happen for you. And, you know, I've got to say, I got, I, I got to bring up uh, the fair last year. Mm -hmm. uh, um, when you tried, when you did that Spanish fly, you had – Everybody nervous, man. Everybody. <laughs> nervous. Yeah. Um, so anyone who knows me knows me will know that I am the most stubborn person you will ever meet. So <laughs> um, 
Dirk's ring was the one we had. Um, that is like one of the few rings that I've wrestled in that are rope, rope, because normally there's cable rope. Right. So, <laughs> um, uh, um, what he's referencing right now is when we went up to do this, the uh, this Spanish fly. Um, if you've ever seen rope, rope, it does not hold like cable does. So we started to go. And when I stepped up there, we kind of wobbled back and forth. Yeah. And there was a question between me and Brandon of, do we abort this move or not? And I went, no, we're here now. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, it was just kind of, we kind of gathered ourselves and we kind of went. And it, we went perfect after that. But it was, it was a... What felt like to me an eternity, and I'm sure did all of everyone else watching, but it was five seconds of, <laughs> oh, my God, they're going to die. I <laughs> was just building up the anticipation of it all. Well, you know, I was standing. That's what I planned the whole time. <laughs> I, I was standing near Terry, and she stopped breathing. <laughs> oh, I love yeah, she, her so much. She's so sweet. She, she gets nervous real easy like that. <laughs> She's as sweet as can be. That's awesome, though. Yeah. And that's what it's about, man. You got to get that one person to believe for a second. That's awesome. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, it just uh, that just I was thinking about that, and it's like, you know, that could have gone wrong, but didn't. <laughs> I'm too yeah. stubborn to, to to let that happen, right. so I'm gonna make it work regardless. You know. Right on. Okay. Yeah. Cool, um, man. This has been great. Uh, yeah, man. Lots of fun. Yeah, this has been one of the. I mean, you know, it's a great Vader story, and uh, this is this is what Wrestle Horror is about. We just like to sit back and BS. You know, talk about stories. Talk about a little bit stories of stories for days. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, I like stories for days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I want to uh, ask the question and stuff because I always like to uh, learn and, and that's my thing. I always try to learn off of people. And one thing about Matt that I've uh, appreciated and sort of admired as well is the fact that even though everybody knows what wrestling is nowadays, Matt still tries to somewhat uh, keep the kayfabe alive. And uh, he, he will live his gimmick sometimes even outside the ring. Yeah. And a perfect example is when uh, the Dark Star was coming to an end, the day he was coming to an end, he was standing in my living room, and we, he was a uh, book at War Wrestling that night, which was the end of Dark Star, mm -hmm. and we had talked about what he had planned for that night and, and you know, what, what he's going to do, and, and the end of Dark Star never came up. I didn't find out until after, <laughs> and I was like, that little bastard, you know? <laughs> so, but I mean, but that, that's, a good, that's a good quality to have is, uh, you know, trying to keep the mystique, and like he said, and the surprise and, and all that alive. Um, but uh, speaking of with you, you know, uh, trying to maintain some sort of kayfabe and, and trying to do live the character sometimes outside of the ring, when you're getting ready for your match and you need to bring the Dark Star or the Godding Light or whoever you are at that time, whether it be masked uh, going against Vader or whatever, um, what do you do to prepare mentally to get yourself into that character? And, uh, I mean, does it music? Is it just, you know, mentally thinking, talking to yourself? Does it just happen? What do you do to get ready? Man, um, it is a lot of self-isolation because I need to, if there's any, okay, I, so I'm a dad, you know, I'm going to put that out there. And anytime that um, the, the, the kids are at the show, it's very hard for me to be Matt Taylor. So... I very much need to be isolated. I need to be alone. I need to be, you know, wholly like immersed in who I am because any thing that is um, not Matt Taylor is, I think, cheapening the, the fans and the performance from what I'm doing. So it's just basically I go off on my own, man. And I kind of sit there and I think, and then I hype myself up and then it's music hits and it's full blown pedals in the middle because I only know one speed cool. and I thought at some point that I would slow down but man the moment I slow down I get hurt and I don't want to get hurt so All right. yep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what it is man 
Yeah, see, I kind of did the same thing when I knew it was, especially if it was like some kind of, the, you know, something that I considered a big match or a, a big storyline I had to get across, then I would kind of do that. I would kind of just like sink into the shadows and get away from everybody and yeah. and uh, just try to find, you know, get ready and find him and bring him out and all that. So that's right. cool, yeah. You know. I mean, wrestling, if we want to do this and we want to uh, – you can say that beyond the match showing everyone that, you know, it's, it's not real. It's whatever. Uh -huh. But if you can for one second, make some belief that I know all the rest of that crap is, you know, it's, it's not real. It's bullshit. But if you can make that one second, someone think, Hey man, that was real. That is the true art form of what we do. Uh -huh. if you can suspend his belief for one second. And like, when I was younger doing this man, like um, the perfect example of that is someone like John uh, uh, Moxley, because Moxley, from the moment I met him, did not stop being crazy. Right. It did not matter what we were doing. It did not matter for a second. I literally would walk into a room and he'd by himself and he was talking to a blade. He didn't know if anyone was, you know, there or not. But mm -hmm. that is what wrestling should be. And everyone all, and all the great ones will act that way. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. Brian Pillman or anyone like that, you know, they're going to make you believe that this is what it is. And that's what wrestling should be, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So um, how can people find out more about the guiding light, Matt Taylor? You got social media, things like that out there. People can find out more about you. I have pamphlets. Would you like a pamphlet? I've got one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can follow me on Twitter, which is at DarkStarMT, which needs to be updated, and on Facebook, um, which is the same thing, DarkStar. Um, you can find me on there, and I will um, spread the gospel of the light to all of you and enlighten all of your souls, because we all need a new outlook on life at this point. Uh, Very true. And I picked up I picked up the pamphlet that was at FGW, and I brought it home. My wife goes, "You actually brought that home?" Hey, hey, absolutely! Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right you should have. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome, uh, Matt! It's been great to talk to you. Um, it's been too long since we've seen you, so hey, man, this is, no. this is just uh, awesome to to talk to you for a little bit here. Yeah, man, I can't wait to the point where I can come up and grab all of you guys and hug the crap out of you and not let go, because right. this has been complete <laughs> bullshit. <So. laughs> yeah, I agree. And that's what I say. I'm like the biggest hugger of all. I hug everybody, and I'm like, now what am I supposed to do? <laughs> well, see, I'm, wait, I'm waiting to see what you do to John Orlando. <laughs> you know what, man? I think there's a Vader bomb in my future, probably. I mean, <laughs> not a chance. The first thing I'm going to do is grab John and, and just kiss him right on his lips because I miss John to death. <laughs> <laughs> but well, uh, it's, been, it's been awesome, man. And, you know, we'd love to have you back on again and get some more stories out of you. Um, um, yeah, that Vader story was awesome. So I'm sure anytime of the yeah. retinue of stories we can talk about. Yeah, um, man, I got them all, man. So anytime, guys, this has been so much fun. Yeah, all right. All right. I agree. I, I think the, the viewers and listeners are going to really enjoy this episode. So uh, mm -hmm. thanks again for being a part of Wrestle Horror on this episode, and uh, you know, keep staying in shape, and we can't wait to see you in the ring again. Guys, I can't wait to be in the ring again, and thank all of you thank you for having me thank all the fans and this has been so cool guys all right uh i am i am meet hook jim with our special guest matt taylor donnie hoover john orlando catch us on the next episode and we'll see you on the flip side thanks for listening make sure you follow us on all, all of our social media outlets facebook.com backslash wrestle horror instagram at wrestle horror twitter at wrestle horror on our youtube channel the wrestle horror channel also you can find us at www.wrestlehorror.com